2005, Microsoft was the first company to get the next generation of consoles started with the Xbox 360, a console that, despite a few hardware issues, quickly became an icon in the video gaming market and was overwhelmingly successful. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're talking about the Xbox 360. How does it hold up some odd 14 years later? <laughs> The Xbox 360 was a big step forward for Microsoft after the original Xbox. It improved on everything, and thanks to Sony's shortcomings, it became the most popular console of the generation, or at least it would have if it wasn't for the Wii, which sold like crazy and was in a completely different league. That being said, you get the idea, the 360 did do really well. Not that it was perfect, mind you. It was great, but there were some problems that probably should have been avoided. First and foremost were a couple basic things like no HDMI, no Wi-Fi on the original models. HDMI I think came around 2007 and Wi-Fi came later as well, so that was good, but I really wish they had been on the original console like the PS3 had. Heck, even the Wii had Wi-Fi at launch. But these were minor issues, and you could buy adapters, and of course the later versions of the consoles had them, so no biggie. The bigger problem that I want to get out of the way right away is the Red Ring of Death. The original 360's Red Ring way, way too often. It was crazy. Red ringing, if you somehow don't know, is essentially when you turn on the 360, it'll light up a green. With red ringing, it lights up red instead. The typical reason for this was overheating, although there were plenty of other things that could go wrong as well. The original 360 just wasn't designed very well when it came to cooling, and as a result, a ton of them failed. Although Microsoft did luckily fix most of these flaws as the years went on. And you know, uh, not a ton of people, but some some people did have their 360s last pretty much forever, but really that's more uncommon than not. I have a friend who like had three Xbox 360s I think before the generation was over because they kept failing. And in case you want to vent some of that frustration with red ringing, here's a 360 getting blown away by a shotgun in beautiful slow motion. Yeah, I, I did this last year with a couple friends, uh, it was pretty pointless, but the, the console had red rings, didn't work, so what else was I gonna do with it? Actually it wasn't my console, it was my my friends, but irrelevant, let's move on. A big reason consoles red ringed is because they were overplayed, and that's something that probably won't happen anymore because A, 360s are old, and B, because the Xbox One is backwards compatible. So if you stick with the Xbox and go to the Xbox One, a lot of your 360 games will play on the Xbox One. Basically, you put in your 360 disc and it will download the game for you. It's pretty great, I wish Sony did this with the PS4, it's honestly a great reason to get the Xbox One over the PS4, although I guess the generation is pretty much over now. And if anything, games run better on the Xbox One typically, so if you have an Xbox One, it's kind of pointless to keep your Xbox 360 around. Not that you should necessarily get rid of it, but for me personally, I've found myself just playing on my Xbox One if I want to play a 360 game, because why drag out and set up my 360 all the time? Although keep in mind, not every game is available on Xbox One. Some really popular ones, like the old Forza Motorsports, for example, can't be played on the newer console due to probably licensing issues, and I'm sure there's a few other older titles you could find that are not backwards compatible. One huge benefit of the Xbox 360 is backwards compatibility, and don't get mixed up, it's not what I was talking about before, the 360 is actually backwards compatible with the original Xbox, the Xbox One, but the real Xbox One. Classics like Halo 1 and Halo 2 and uh other original Xbox games can be played on the Xbox 360. And while not every game is available, there's a good enough selection that you could probably just uh, put that giant old Xbox into storage. Seriously, the original Xbox is huge, it's ridiculous. My Xbox 360 you see here is the arcade version from 2009, and I actually got it for the Christmas of that year, pretty great gift from my uncle. It was awesome, a huge upgrade from the PS2 for me. I remember it came with Kung Fu Panda, a game I still have and I don't think ever opened, so it's completely sealed. So if someone out there is a collector and wants to buy a sealed copy of Kung Fu Panda for a ton of money, hit me up on Twitter at 91 underscore tech because I will sell it to you. And if not, then I'll just wait until it's worth millions. This iteration of the 360 is one of the best in my opinion when it comes to old style consoles simply because it looks a little bit cleaner with that white disc tray instead of chrome. Mind you, the arcade version of the 360 actually wasn't a great pickup back in the day though. 
although I didn't know, as I believe it only has a 256 megabyte drive. Most old 360s have bigger hard drives than that, but uh, they are going to vary. And one really cool thing about the 360 is that you can very, very easily add an external hard drive, such as this one right here. The best thing about these drives is not only are they super easy to use, but they don't look out of place at all. In fact, they look like they're a part of the console. Note that you can't use these on the newer 360s, these were just for the older ones, but still, I really liked them. I think they were clever design, and so props to Microsoft for that. I suppose we should just quickly cover all the differing models of the 360 because there are quite a few. The original Xbox 360, pretty self-explanatory. From here we got the 360 Elite, which featured a bigger hard drive and matte black finish. We also have the 360 Arcade, which I have. After this, Microsoft changed up the design with the Xbox 360S, also known as the Slim, which is a sleek black version of the console. I always loved the look of this one, but I felt that it kind of lacked the classic feel of some of the older Xboxes. And then came the final iteration, the Xbox 360E. It was essentially the slim, but in a case that looked really similar to the Xbox One. If you're looking to buy a 360 now, and you're wondering which one you should get, it's kind of just up to you, and whatever deals you can find. 360s vary wildly in price, but pretty much all of these consoles can be found for like under 50 bucks on ebay.com. If reliability is important to you, I do suggest you get the Xbox 360 Slim. I think it's the sleekest looking, personally. And at this point, Microsoft had ironed out most of my complaints, such as red ringing, no Wi-Fi, HDMI, that kind of stuff. That was all fixed with the Slim. Just make sure you get the 250 gigabyte version, not the 4 gig version, if you plan on downloading games. And one nice thing about buying these older consoles, particularly locally on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever, is that you can often find bundles. So people just want to get rid of it all, so they'll sell like, you know, 20 games with their 360 and a couple controllers for 100 bucks. If you look around, you might be able to find something like that, and that's definitely the way to go if you can. And actually, that's the benefit of these older consoles in general. Not only are they cheaper to buy initially, but the games are all super cheap too, with almost all of them being under 20 bucks, a lot of them being like 5, 10 bucks type thing. That's a steal for really, really good games that are just old. And when it comes to games, the 360 has you covered. The console is just filled to the brim with amazingly fun games, both exclusives and otherwise. Just to name a few, every Halo that played on the 360, Fable 2, Forza Horizon, The Old Assassin's Creed, Gears of War 3, Mass Effect 2, The First Red Dead Redemption. I could continue on forever, and undoubtedly I've already angered somebody by either exclusion or inclusion, so let's just move on. There's an almost infinite amount of games you can sink your teeth into here, and if you miss the 360 the first time around and have a ton of time to burn, it's not a bad pickup whatsoever. And honestly, gameplay is usually pretty good in most of these games. Because these 360s are capable of high definition, most games haven't aged horribly as they're at least playable in 7 20p. There was a definite shift near the end of the generation as graphics got a whole lot better, but a lot of these games look great and play just as well. For example, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit here definitely doesn't look like a game from 2010. Well, actually, maybe it does. Honestly, I remember it looking a whole lot better, maybe it's the nostalgia speaking here. And it's worth mentioning that when it comes to games from the older generation, they generally played better on the Xbox 360 than the PS3, often with higher frame rates and uh, resolution. Gameplay is great, and so is the controller that makes it all happen. I have many times heard the 360 be called the best controller of all time. Maybe it's not the best, but it's extremely solid and the way it fits in your hand is pretty much perfect. It might not look as sleek as the Xbox One controller, but it'll always be more memorable, at least for me. One minor complaint is that these controllers will definitely eat up all of your AA batteries, which was especially annoying as a kid. Although this is actually the same case with the Xbox One controllers. So so just make sure you have a stockpile of batteries around and I guess you'll be okay. Or you could just buy a rechargeable battery, but who wants to do that? Online support is a bit scarce. Some will still have servers running, but there usually aren't a whole lot of people still playing on them. And you will need an Xbox Live subscription for that kind of thing, so honestly I'd say the 360 is best used as a single player machine now. Or local co-op. Remember split screen games? Yeah, there are quite a few on the 360, so that's always an option if you want something to play with friends and you can manage to scrounge up four controllers. Oh, and the Kinect was the thing. Like millions of other people, my family quickly regretted buying the Kinect as we realized it did not live up to the hype. Super cool hardware, mind you, but the games for it were mostly pretty bad, and at the end of the day, Microsoft was really just trying to cash in on the Wii's success. At least they were a little bit more creative than 
Sony with it, who essentially just made Wiimotes with the PlayStation Move. The Xbox 360 is an amazing console, even 14 years later, and it should always continue to be. If you missed the last console generation, or perhaps just haven't done a ton of gaming in your lifetime in general, picking up an old Xbox 360 or PS3 is a great way to catch up. The consoles are cheap, the games are cheap, it's a win-win both for you and your wallet. And honestly, there's just a lot to like with the 360, even 14 years later. When I think of my childhood, I think of playing Halo Reach in my parents' basement for hours and hours on end. This console provided me so much entertainment as a kid, and while the 360 definitely feels aged compared to the Xbox One, in my opinion, the magic is still there. And with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. Did you ever have an Xbox 360? What was your favorite game, and why is it Halo Reach? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video enjoyable or interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you want to for some reason. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.